CFA, DSE and MFB have been reviewing the bushfire command and control arrangements that were put in place last fire season. This coincides with a review of the all hazards command and control arrangements under the State Emergency Response Plan that were being reviewed by Victoria Police this year. In addition with the findings from the Victorian Bushfire Royal Commission, we've undertaken a couple of changes to the bushfire command and control arrangements that will put in place for this coming fire season. The first, as you're probably aware, is that we now have a newly appointed Fire Services Commissioner and he will be the permanent default state controller. He may choose to delegate this to one of the three fire chiefs. But the state controller position will be in place at all times. The bushfire command and control arrangements will also be in place at all times and not triggered on a day-to-day -day basis as they were last year. This year also the command and control arrangements will apply to all levels of fire, not just level 3 fires as they were last year. Last year we had eight area of operations controllers appointed, one for each state government region. This year those same people will be called regional controllers, so we will have eight regional controllers appointed across the state. And these roles will be rostered between DSE and CFA. A regional controller will have responsibility for bushfire preparedness and response. The Metropolitan Fire District will still remain under the control of the Metropolitan Fire Brigade. In addition to having eight regional controllers in place, there might be a time when a fire starts in one particular region and then crosses into another region. In most cases it's expected we'd still manage those fires based on the existing regional boundaries. However, if a fire became so complex or crossed significantly into another region, or had a severe consequences, there might be a need to actually put a distinct boundary around that particular fire or group of fires and declare that a separate area of operations distinct from the existing eight regions. If we do that, we'll have an area of operations controller in charge of that area of operations. The simple way to think about this is that our normal agency procedures apply when we're responding to bushfires. So for most fires, we'll follow our normal agency procedure. But once first attack has failed, then the incident controller needs to start reporting to the regional controller who will be in place at all times. There might be some circumstances, however, where the regional controller or state controller decides that all fires must always be reported through the regional controller, and that would probably happen on a day of code red. In response to the Victorian Bushfire Royal Commission recommendations, CFA and DSE undertook to improve IMT preparedness for this coming fire season. Now for extreme fire days, we'll have up to 32 incident control centres staffed by a minimum of eight people. In addition, we'll have one fully formed IMT that's pre-located to a central region such as Ballarat or Essendon Airport that can be flown to any one of the incident control centres across the state if needed. On extreme days, the state controller might require that we actually have fully formed IMTs in place. But that will be determined on a day-to-day -day basis. For code red days, when the entire state is at code red, we will have 12 full 30-person IMTs established across the state and in place by 10 o'clock. In addition to those 12 fully formed teams, we'll also have up to eight incident control centres that have four people in them and about 20 incident control centres that have eight people in them. In addition to that, we'll also have two mobile fully formed incident management teams, again at a centrally located place, that can be flown to any one of those facilities. If only one region has a code red forecast, that region must have a fully formed IMT in place by 10 o'clock. The state controller might expect that we exceed those minimum requirements. If a fire started um, on a day where we do have pre-position teams in place, it's expected that the pre-position teams would take responsibility for managing the initial response to that fire. If a fire starts in an area where we have four or eight people at a facility and a nearby facility has a full 30 person team in place, it's expected generally that the initial response to the fire would be managed by the nearest incident control centre regardless of how many people are in place. But of course, this might be at the discretion of the regional controller or state controller on any given day.